Hello from San Antonio. This is Siren Tarot. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. What does he really want to tell you? And what's stopping him? What does she really want to tell you? And what's stopping her? This reading is timeless. And for this reading, there are four different options. Option one. Nature. Option two, dreams. Option three, celebration. And option four, quattro, intention. As always, timestamps will be provided. Think of your person of interest and make your selection. If you chose the first card, Nature, here is your reading. So this card is from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. Absolutely gorgeous. If you chose the first card, you could have an Earth dominant chart. I'll call out a possible astro combo just for fun. You could have Sun and Taurus. Virgo rising, moon and Libra. Okay, what would they really tell you? What do they want to tell you? What's stopping them? Heavy emphasis at this channel on entertainment purposes. When I make my own decks, I make it a point to make a blend of negative and positive. I think it would be absolutely ridiculous to just make a lot of lovesick, positive, sappy messages. So I don't go that way. We could be a power couple. We can be friends. You are so gorgeous. The Lever Oracle. It says heart-shaped fortune telling cards, but I got it from Timu, so. The way I have treated you was wrong. My life is a mess right now. Drugs and alcohol. I love it. That's just so weird and random, but so common and so true. Let's get serious. 222, two, two. I'm in love with you. 999, nine, nine. you should be mine. Okay, the playing cards will help me get more of a sense of who this person is exactly, what their astral combo might possibly be. Three of spades, three of swords, three of espadas, queen of diamonds, queen of pentacles, reign of the oros. I feel like this is you. <clears throat> Again, I'm getting strong earth vibes for the people who chose pile one for obvious reasons. Nature, earth, 
I'm seeing Taurus. And then nine of spades, nine of swords, and the way that they is spotted. Okay, this person is clearly not balanced. They're not sure what the hell they want. Um, this energy is very erratic. This could be someone who comes in and out of your life. I'm getting hot and cold. Hot and cold, off and on. I feel like this person is a player. I feel like they're talking to a few different people. And they're just messy. They're all over the place. They're codependent. They have no sense of boundaries. They have no sense. They could be grappling with a diagnosis. They could be grappling with any number of addictions. But this person is not healthy. They're not well. Um, they're toxic. And you know this already. You've seen the red flags. You've probably blocked this person at least once. A possible astral combo for this person. I feel like they have a lot of air. Well, we have the two swords. Um, they could have Sun and Aquarius, Gemini rising, Moon and Virgo. That's just one possibility. Moon and Virgo can be very problematic. I speak from experience because I do have my Moon in Virgo in the first house, and it makes a lot of aspects. Um, Moon and Virgo can be very unstable, very neurotic. Um, and it takes you a lot of time, work, conscious effort, energy to really get a good handle on Moon and Virgo. You can struggle with low self-esteem and just all kinds of issues. So... Um, there's a very strong karmic pull. There's a very strong attraction. But when the two of you get together, it's like, okay, now what? Because I'm not seeing two people who are on the same path. I don't see, um, I don't see that you have much in common beyond the sexual attraction. I feel like you have a lot more maturity and life experience in this person. There could be an age gap. You could be a few years older, or you just have a lot more maturity and wisdom than this person has. So yeah, their life is a mess. I believe it. Um, I don't think it makes much sense to offer advice with these card readings. People are going to do what they want to do. I really stress entertainment purposes of this channel, but if this was a client reading and I was giving advice, I would say it might be time to really determine why do you want to invite this person's chaos into your life. It might be a good time to detach from this. So yeah, that's what I see. That's what I have for pile one. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in every box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose the second card, Dreams, here's your reading. So this card is from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll guess your astro combo just for fun. I'm obsessed with astrology. So if you chose the second card, you could have a strong Neptune signature in your natal chart. You could have Pisces rising. You could have a Neptune that makes a lot of aspects. So you could have Sun in Libra, Pisces rising, Moon in Sagittarius. That's just one possibility of many. You are probably intuitive, possibly psychic. Maybe you read cards. You could be into Reiki. I feel like you are spiritual if you chose the second card. Okay, when I do a reading like this, I really put a heavier than usual emphasis on entertainment purposes. So grain of salt, all of that. I obviously customized 
these cards. And whenever I make my own deck, I make it a point to do a blend of positive and negative because I think it would be absolutely ridiculous to just make a bunch of lovesick, sappy cards. That's just not how I operate. What would they really tell you? What's stopping them? Nothing going on but the rent. I suck at life. I enjoy your pics and videos. This person could have Mars and Pisces. I'll call it a possible astral combo once I get all the cards down. Lover Oracle, I got this from Timu. It says, heart-shaped fortune-telling cards. Okay. Heart-shaped, rectangle-shaped, what's the difference, right? I can't handle your love. My life is a mess right now. I was hurt by you. I don't like this person's energy. They seem to be blunt, to be vulgar, quite limp dick. This is a limp dick energy and not to discriminate or show my prejudice, but I found Mars and Pisces to be quite limp dick. So it's not the best place for Mars. Um, if you're a heterosexual woman and you're interested in men, the best place for Mars is Mars and Capricorn. If you want a good lover, you want someone who's really enthusiastic and really enjoys fucking you and fucks you well, Mars and Capricorn, Mars and Aries, those are the best. Mars and Sagittarius can be quite good depending on which house it's in. Mars and Leo, Ace. I don't think I'm ready. Definite limp dick energy here. You're my favorite person. Crazy. Love, come on now. This ain't Hollywood. <laughs> okay, the playing cards to make more sense of who this person is exactly and call it a possible astral combo for this fucker. I call it the sex card. Eight of wands. Ocho de bastos. Two of spades, two of swords, two of spades, two of Eight of spades, eight of swords, ocho de espadas. I would throw this fish back in the pond. I would keep fishing. This is not your quote unquote person, I would say. Um, if this is a man <clears throat> who seems like he's heterosexual, he could possibly be in the closet um, because I'm not getting his sexual enthusiasm for you or for anyone. It looks like he's just really low in his libido right now. He's down in the depths of self-loathing. He could be in between jobs. He could be couch surfing. He could just have really shitty self-esteem. Um, so I'm getting the sense of someone who has more issues than Nat Geo, more issues than Playboy, more issues than Hustler. Could be grappling with an addiction similar to pile one, but unlike pile one, I don't see this person being a Chad or a player. I don't see them shooting their shot at Instagram, just talking to various people, flirting, having sex with various people, sexting various people. Their sexual energy is almost non-existent. Maybe they're asexual. I don't know. Um, but this sticks out like a sore thumb. The Eight of Wands is not syncing up with the cards around it. I'm seeing little to no communication. Um, someone who's very cynical, depressed. They don't have anything to offer you.
Yeah, I'm not seeing anything for this person. Um, Matt, that name just popped into my head. Like I've said before, I'm not one of those readers who just goes through the damn alphabet calling out every possible name. But if a name jumps into my head, pops into my head, I just go with it. And I just got Matt. Matt, Michael, Mitch. I'm getting an M name. Um, a possible astro combo for this person. They could have Sun in Gemini, Mars in Pisces, Leo rising, Moon in Cancer. I feel like they have a lot of trauma from their childhood. And it's tempting for some women. I know I've seen this in my life. I've never been this kind of woman, but I've seen women in my family who are like this. You see this guy and you feel like you can fix him. You feel sorry for him. You feel compassion. You feel this maternal instinct. And that could be going on here. You feel like you can help this person or fix this person. Perhaps you've loaned or given this person some money. You've tried to help them get a job. And you can sign up for a project like that, but it's going to be a lifetime of work, trying to get this person up, trying to get them to the next level, trying to help them because they don't want to help themselves. They have no ambition and they have no self-esteem is what I'm getting from these cards. So that's what I see. That's what I have for the second card. I'm always available for private readings, all the infos in every box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose card number three, Celebration. This card is from Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm calling out possible astro combos for those who chose the cards based on the Oracle card. So if you chose pile three, you could have Sun in Sagittarius, Libra Rising, Moon and Aries, that's just one possibility. But I feel like you have strong Jupiter and probably strong fire in your natal chart. You're probably an extrovert, could be an influencer, you could have a YouTube channel or channels. I always put an emphasis on entertainment purposes at this channel, but especially when I'm doing a reading like this with customized cards. So I obviously customize these cards and whenever I customize cards, I make a blend of positive and negative, so. You look good enough to eat. We could get married, but that wouldn't solve anything. I don't need the drama. I got this deck from Timu, Lover Oracle, heart-shaped fortune telling cards. Heart-shaped, rectangle-shaped, what's the difference, right? People don't believe in me. I want out. <laughs> Fuck. This love is crazy. I believe it. I care about you, but I'm not in love. You scare me. I'll hurt you if you let me. Then to get more of a sense of who this person is and to call out a possible astro combo for this person, I've got the playing cards. The 
Jack of Hearts, the Knight of Cups, Caballo de Copas, Seven of Spades, Seven of Swords, it's the Espadas, Three of Hearts, Three of Cups, Three of Copas. Okay, I feel like the two of you are not a match. This is not your quote unquote person. This is not someone you're going to marry and create a family or empire with. <clears throat> this is a fling. Okay, this could be friends with benefits. It could be a booty call, situationship, strong lust. You look good enough to eat. I can see this person just laying on the flattery at Instagram, just slobbering all over your selfies, your pictures, your videos. Really enthusiastic, but then once you really start talking, there's not much there. Um, you could be a few years older than this person, and they could be really hung up on what people think. They could be really superficial and shallow, and they want a Barbie and Ken kind of relationship, the kind of relationship that looks really good on social media. Um, and you're not in sync. You and this person are not a red carpet kind of couple. Um, there are differences that can't be reconciled. And this person's really hung up on appearances is what I'm getting. So it could be that you just get together and you have sex and they don't introduce you to their friends or family. Um, this person's duplicitous. They could be the kind of person who has, to be really blunt, to be really vulgar, they have the side piece, they have the person they keep secret, and then they have the person that they make a big show of on social media. So could be third party, they could be married or in a serious relationship, and they see you when it's convenient for them. They sext you when it's convenient for them. And a lot of times women mistake sexual interest for something else. Or you think, okay, we're having really good sex. So they're going to catch feelings. And I can tell you from experience, that's not how it works. This person has you in a specific category. Um, a possible astro combo for this person, they could have sun and cancer Mercury and Mars in Gemini, Libra rising, Moon and Pisces. That's one possibility of many. But I don't see two people who really know each other. I'm not seeing in-depth conversations. I'm not seeing two people who are on the same path, who have shared values and interests. This is a sexual thing. It's a fling. It's not going to last. Um, this kind of energy cannot be sustained unless the only way it could be sustained is if you are okay with something casual that's not going to progress. You're okay with just being this person's accessory or um, the person they go to for instant gratification. If you're okay with that, then this could go on for years. But if you're wanting something deep and emotionally gratifying, this ain't it. Brad. The name Brad just popped into my head. I get names on occasion. I don't really get too heavy with the names at this channel, but Brad, Ben, Bobby, Blake, Bryce. Yeah, that's what I see for pile three. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the info's in every box. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. And if you chose Quattro, card number four, intention, here is your reading. So this is from Victoria Mosley's Vintage Wisdom Oracle, the most visually stunning oracle deck I've ever seen. If you chose the fourth card, I feel like you have strong Saturn in your natal chart. You could have Sun and Capricorn, Capricorn rising, Moon and Cancer, one possibility. 
I always emphasize entertainment purposes at this channel, but especially when I'm doing a reading like this with obviously customized message cards. What would they really say to you and what's stopping them? You seem dangerous. Let's chat. I have a lot of friends. Lover Oracle. Got this deck from Timu. Looking at the stove clock, it's 404. Make a wish. Four and four, that's eight, Capricorn. I don't know where to start. They have hurt me. That sounds ominous. I need to hold back my true feelings for you. I don't trust you. Let's get serious. <laughs> See, they contradict each other. 999, you should be mine. Okay, in the playing cards to get more a sense of who this person is, call out a possible astro combo for this person. Ten of spades, ten of swords, this, the espadas, eight of diamonds, eight of pentacles, ocho de oros, two of hearts, two of cups, those de copas. So weirdly enough, I feel like there is romantic interest for pile four. This may be the first pile where I've seen genuine romantic interest. It goes beyond sex and mind fuckery. Um, it's mixed, but I mean, usually when I do the message readings, there are messages that contradict each other. They're all over the place. So I have to dig. I have to go beyond the obvious. Okay, we do have eight. And I'm getting strong Capricorn vibes and Saturn. Saturn is serious. Saturn does not play. That's really strong to have eight of pentacles next to the two of cups, two of hearts like that. That's serious. Eight and two, that's 10, one, Leo, the sun. Leo does not play. Well, when they get older, they don't. Anyway, I won't get too deep into the astrology, but, uh, and another 10. Okay, I feel like this person has baggage and trust issues. They may have been married before it ended quite badly. Perhaps they were married to someone who cheated on them. Uh, and they see you, they see that you're very attractive. They see that you have a lot of value. You're smart, you're successful, you have good self-esteem, you're healthy, and they're feeling intimidated, perhaps. They're feeling like they have competition. And they don't know where to begin because they feel these feelings developing and it scares them, maybe. Um, And it could be one of those things where you meet on social media and they see that you're visible, they see you're getting a lot of attention, they see that you're attractive and they feel like, if this is a man and you're a woman, they could be feeling like, fuck, I'm just one more thirsty fuck boy sliding into the DMs. They want you to think more highly of them than that is what I'm getting. And I hate to say it, I say it a lot, I just say what I see. And what I'm seeing, what I'm picking up is that it could be third party. Maybe they're still married to someone and they're separated, but it's being drawn out. It's not so easy to just sign a paper and get divorced. There's money at stake, child custody, some damn thing. There's a lot of stuff at work 
a lot of stuff at play here. They could be going through a very difficult, problematic divorce. And so there's that. They're not free to really pursue you. And they know that you deserve better than that. Um, they don't want to be sleazy about it. Okay. They don't want to just sex to you. They don't want to just have this flirtatious chat. They want to really get to know you in your totality is what I'm picking up from these cards. They feel this strong pull toward you. They feel this connection. And oddly enough, there is potential here. This could turn into a really serious relationship. But right now, there's some stuff to work through is what I would say. I didn't call it a possible astral combo for this person, did I? Um, this person could have Sun and Aquarius, Mercury and Mars, and Capricorn. Scorpio rising. Moon and Scorpio. I'm getting a lot of fixed energy. I'm not really seeing Taurus. I'm seeing Aquarius and Scorpio. I'm not really seeing Leo either. Although we have this 10. But um, I am seeing interest here. And they're not telling you. They're not putting all the cards on the table, so to speak, because it is complicated. And they don't want you to think that it's just sexual because they sense real potential with you. It's what I'm getting. Going beyond the cards, that's my intuition. That's what I see for Pile 4. And that does conclude this Pick a Card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing far and wide. Let's get this channel up to, I don't know, 25,000 subscribers maybe. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.